Well, welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications Using ArcGIS. From our last session, we were covering some raster surprises or things you discover in rasters that you typically won't find in point, line, and polygon. And one of the things sometimes you'll see is how rasters are resampled. So if we look at the raster properties for this, the default resampling in this case is nearest neighbor resampling. And typically what that is, is display each pixel using the pixel value. And another alternative resampling would be bilinear interpolation. So bilinear interpolation for each pixel display it based on the weighted average of the four closest pixels. So if we hit apply, this is bilinear interpolation. So it's basically a smoother raster where for each pixel, it's using the weighted average of the four closest pixels. So sometimes rasters will appear smooth because this resampling has been set to either bilinear interpolation or a cubic convolution would be for each pixel, use the weighted average of the 16 closest pixels. So if I hit apply, this would be cubic convolution resampling. So typically bilinear is used with quantitative data and nearest neighbor is typically used with categorical data. So I turn it back to nearest neighbor resampling. Okay, the other thing that's different with rasters is under our layer properties, there's no tab for definition query. So you have an option, you can use the tool make raster layer to make a definition query, and that's a temporary definition query, or you can use the con tool, which is um, basically creates a permanent raster based on some user specified condition. So we'll be doing both in this video session to illustrate those two. Okay, so we can do a search for the tool make raster layer, and that's in the data management toolbox. And basically what that tool does is allow you to do a definition query on a raster and then create a raster layer based on that definition query. So our input raster will be our test raster. And then we could name our layer whatever we want because that's going to be a temporary layer. So I'll call this raster above five. And then the query will be, is the value greater than, get all the unique values that are in the raster attribute table, so five. So that will create a new layer named raster above five, and it should display those pixels that have a value greater than a pixel value of five. So then OK to execute that tool. So it does create a layer displaying those pixels with values above five, but unlike the definition query, if we do, for example, identify for this pixel, move this up here, that's a value of five for this pixel, it's a value of four. So it's different than the definition query in that if we use a geoprocessing tool, it would apply to all the pixels, the invisible ones, as well as the visible ones. So what you can do is use a con tool if you don't want these pixels considered in geoprocessing that have a value of five or less. So we'll do the con tool to show you the difference. So we'll search for the con. Okay, so we run the CON tool, and CON stands for test some condition. So in this case, our condition is going to be value greater than 5. And the input conditional raster is our original test raster. And then if this condition is true, what do we want the pixel values to be? So in this case, if that condition is true, retain the original pixel values. And if that's false, it'll just become no data. And then we output to a permanent raster, I'll call it uh, raster above 5.tiff. And then we can execute this geoprocessing tool. Okay, so now these pixels that originally were five have a value of no data. 
So basically, if we use our geoprocessing tool on this raster now, it will ignore all these pixels that are no data pixels. And we could adjust the symbology to display those no data pixels. So if we go to our properties and then display no data as a color black, for example. So these are all the no data pixels that were not satisfied by the condition question we were asking. And then if we look at the raster attribute table, Indeed, it has values all above five. Okay, another thing that's different with rasters compared to points, lines, and polygons is that if you export a layer in points, lines, and polygons, basically it saves a duplicate of those points, lines, and polygons. If we export rasters, it's a bad idea to export rasters because you never know what you're going to get because basically it's going to, um, if we say, okay, export the extent of our current data frame, you'd expect to get these six pixels and you may not. So I'll show you as an example, we'll export the extent of this data frame and I'll just output it to um, ctemp and I'll just call this export.tiff. Okay, so we're going to export .tiff to the folder location C temp, the extent of our current data frame. So in this case, it's the extent of the first three columns and the first two rows, and then save. And you notice the spatial extent of our exported raster is different than the original raster. So it's always a bad idea to export rasters. Typically what you want to do is you want to use the clip tool to cut out rasters. So with a clip tool, what we would have to have is some polygon basically delineating the area that we want to cut out. Okay, so what we could do is use the create fishnet tool and basically we could say, okay, our X coordinate, Y coordinate origin will be at this location. And then our cell size will be the exact same cell size as our raster. So it's 100 for width and 100 for height. And we'll have two rows and three columns. And we'll make polygons with this create fishnet tool. So we execute this create fishnet tool. And we get the resulting polygon that we now can use to cut out these six pixels from our raster. So that would be the clip tool that'll allow us to perfectly cut out those six pixels. So then we could run the clip tool. So do a search for clip tool. And there's actually two clip tools, one for points, lines, and polygons, and one for rasters. So the one in the data management toolbox is for rasters. So then it's basically, we'll use that clip tool and cut out our original raster based on our polygons and then use the input polygons for clipping and then we'll put that in c test so i'll call this clipped raster dot tiff and then just okay so now we have our clipped raster and it just randomly assigns uh, colors for the categories and we could assign the same colors as our test, our original test three raster by going to symbology. So I'll uncheck the test three raster, going to symbology, and then going to this import. So import the symbology from our test raster three, and then OK. So this is our clipped raster, which we cut out from our test raster using our polygons.